Hey Church, welcome to your daily devotion. My name is Hannah and today it's actually my privilege to bring the last installment of our relationship series where we've been looking at the Bible and relationships in the Bible to see what we can glean from them, learn from them, to bring into our relationships in our life. And we're about to start a brand new series, but this is the final installment on relationships. And today we are looking at the relationship between Peter and Jesus. Now, their relationship all starts where Jesus is on the shore and Peter, then called Simon, he's in a boat. And if you remember in Luke 5, you might know the account. He speaks about how they should fish. He actually, in this account, gets into the boat and he says, put your nets down on this side of the boat. And Peter, called Simon then, was like, we've been fishing all night, Jesus. We, we don't think that there's going to be any fish. And then you remember the account. The nets are filled so full that they can barely pull them in. And then Jesus says, come and follow me. And Peter becomes one of Jesus' disciples. He's kind of the feisty, passionate, raw disciple. I love Peter's personality. I love reading the Bible and hearing his personality come out. If you remember, he's the disciple when the um, officers, the soldiers come to um, arrest Jesus. Of course, Peter pulls out his sword and he's like, you must go through me, chops off one of the ears of the soldiers. Jesus is like, oh, has to heal the soldier's ear. But that's Peter. Peter is raw, he's feisty, he's passionate, and he's committed to Jesus, both as his leader and his friend. But today, I want us not to look at the first uh, encounter of Peter, and Jesus. But I actually want to look at one of the last encounters of their earthly relationship. I want to look at what happened after Jesus has died and he's resurrected. And Peter, he's gone back with the disciples out fishing. And Jesus, he has appeared three times to some of the disciples. But in John 21, I want to look at this account in encounter where Jesus is stood on the shore and he calls to the disciples once again. It says this in John 21, verse three. It says, early in the morning, Jesus stood on the shore, but the disciples, they didn't realize it was Jesus. He called out to them, friends, haven't you any fish? No, they answered. He said, throw your nets on the right side of the boat and you will find some. When they did, they were unable to haul the nets in because of such a large number of fish. Then the disciple who Jesus loved, that was John, said to Peter, maybe it kind of felt familiar, it is the Lord. As soon as Simon Peter heard him say, it's the Lord, he wrapped his outer garments around him and he jumped into the water and he swam to shore. I love this encounter because again, we just see Peter's personality coming out. But let me give you a bit of um, context to this scene so we can kind of step into it and learn some lessons from it between Peter and Jesus. For context, Jesus has died. And if you remember what happened was even though Peter had promised he was going to be faithful to him, to his leader and his friend, what had happened is after Jesus has died, Peter denied him three times. This is the first time that Peter encounters Jesus again. It's the first time and there must be something so familiar about the scene that it feels again like the moment that Jesus called him. He's in a boat and there's so many fish and then he looks up and he realizes it's Jesus. Oh, it's Jesus. You can imagine. I don't know how you'd feel. I'd feel a bit nervous. I just promised that I'd be faithful to him and yet here I am in a boat again having denied him three times. So what he does is he wraps his garments around him and he just jumps out of the boat. He can't wait for the boat to get to shore. He just has to swim to shore. And he gets to shore. And if you remember the account, um, you can read it in John 21 yourself today. Take a moment to read it. Jesus asks, Peter three times, do you love me? Mirroring the denials the three times that he denied him. And Peter, he's like, I, I love you. I love you, Lord. It says he gets upset at the fact that Jesus is asking him. And then this is what it says. It says that 
Peter was hurt because Jesus asked him the third time, do you love me? He said, Lord, you know all things. You know all things. You know that I denied you, but you know that I love you. Jesus said, feed my sheep. Very truly, I tell you, when you were younger, you dressed yourself and went where you wanted. But when you were old, you stretched out your hands and someone else dressed you and led to you where you were going. Jesus said this to indicate the sort of death that Peter would have that would glorify God. Then he said again to Peter, follow me. I love this account of their relationship because I want to draw out two lessons that we can learn both from Peter, but also a lesson that we can learn from Jesus. I love that Peter teaches us in this account, no matter what you think you have done, no matter if you feel like your actions have denied the Lord, denied Jesus, or maybe you have verbally done, no matter what you feel like you've done that's put your space between you and your relationship with Jesus. I love that Peter in this is saying, run to Jesus. Or in this account, swim to him. He's saying whatever you feel, however you feel the gap is between you, whatever guilt you feel, whether or not you feel, oh, I didn't read my Bible again, or I'm not good enough, or I did that habit again, or whatever it is that you feel separates between you and Jesus. I love that Peter is in the boat. He had every reason to hide, to stay in the boat, to kind of deny, oh, it's Jesus, I don't want to talk to him, but he doesn't. He doesn't even wait for the boat to get to shore. He just pulls up his garments and he just jumps into the water and and he swims to him. However you feel today, whether or not it's very real what you have done or just how you're feeling, Peter teaches us, run to Jesus, swim to Jesus. And then of course, what Jesus is teaching us in this amazing account is what we can expect our Lord Jesus to do. He will have open arms. He will not condemn you. He will not reject you. He will have open arms. And if you lean in, you will always hear him say again to you, follow me. The Bible talks, uh, and the title of this is the reinstatement of, G of uh, Peter, where maybe he had felt like he had disqualified himself, but actually it was in the swimming to Jesus and the moment he took with Jesus and the answering of the questions of Jesus where Jesus said to him again, he did not reject him. He did not say, get away from me. He said, come and follow me. So today, I don't know how you're feeling. I don't know if you feel really close with Jesus or maybe you feel a long way away from Jesus. But church, I wanna encourage you to lean in, to listen and allow Jesus once again to say to you, follow me. And why don't you say, I will, I will. Let me pray for you. Father God, we thank you for today. We thank you that you never reject us. God, we thank you that nothing can separate us from your love. So today we choose to run to you. We choose to cross whatever it is that makes us feel uh, distant or separated from you. We choose to lean in and hear you, hear your voice, what you're saying. We love you. We worship you. In Jesus' name, amen. We love you, church. Have a brilliant day. Have a great weekend. We'll see you on Sunday, wherever you are. Get to one of the campuses. Mwah. See you soon.